Okay guys, today I'll show you how to create a realistic flag animation by using NCLOCK simulation. Okay, so first thing you all need to do is definitely create the model of a flag. So here I have a pole and uh, I have created a plan. So you may notice that on this plan, I have a lot of uh, vertices. The reason why I want to keep the detail is because, you know, um, if you have nest subdivision and then, you know, the animation won't be that great. So you want to have enough subdivision. That's the first thing. Um, but you need to know that the more subdivisions you have, um, it's going to slow down your computer to generate the animation. Uh, so you need to really think about what this flag uh, animation you created for. Is just for animation or you're going to bring it to game engine. So normally, uh, if you build a mobile game, it cannot run a lot. Um, you know, detailed uh, animation. However, if you are just uh, doing animation, 3D animation, then and uh, your computer can take more vertices and rendering. Okay, so after I create this plan, and before I actually go to animation, I'll um, make sure you know I um, unfold this UV. So here you can see that in the UV editor, I already um, um, did a planner mapping. The UV of this uh, plan is folded, as you can see, as a uh, positive side is up, and also the proportion is correct. Okay, and also put uh, the pole on this uh, map as well. See, the pole is here, and then the, here's the flag. The reason why I want to do the UV before I make the animation is because, uh, you know, um, after you twist the flag. It's gonna be really hard for you to do mapping, you know, of the flag, and then get a uh, a good result, a flat piece of UV. So it will be always better that uh, you do the UV first, then you go for animation. Okay, now let's uh, start the topic. So after I got this model, I fix the UV. Um, so what I should do? So basically, the first thing you all have to do is to select this plan, and then switch from modeling tab to FX, which is the effects tab. And there you will find uh, a section called uh, Encloth. And click on that, and you'll have the option, create Encloth. Apply that. And then when you go down to Maya, you'll see uh, this ruler, which is for animation. So if I go back to zero, uh, actually frame one, first frame, and then if I play, and you'll see the flag is uh, falling. Okay, so back to frame one and play, and you'll see what happened. Basically, the flag is falling down. Um, the reason why it happened is because now we apply the physics, which is the N-clock, to the flag, and it has a uh, gravity, and definitely uh, it don't have anything to hold it, so it all falling down. Okay, so basically, the next step is we want um have some we won't have something to hold this flag to prevent it falling in reality if you have a flag definitely is connected to this pole so basically the pole going to hold this flag so here in the animation we'll do the same thing all right so we'll go to the vertex mode vertex selection mode make sure you're selecting in the plan and vertex selection mode and we'll select all vertices on this side edge and right now it's hard to see so I um, would recommend you press 4 key, the number 4, which will display the wireframe of your model. Uh, so in that way, we can see through uh, this pole. And here you go. So I selected all the vertices on this line. So what I want to do is I want all these vertices on this line to hold its position, to hold it, no matter uh, what this flag is doing. By doing that, um, this point will hold this flag and prevent it from falling. Okay, so select these vertices and then you will go to the top menu and constraint and you'll apply transform constraint. So you don't have to go to the setting box, you know, uh, default settings fine. So just apply transport constraint and then you'll see that you create this cross so basically this cross is an indica indicator that uh, 
um, this point will hold the position. Okay, so now let's see if I play and um, you can see that this point is holding the position. And if I press 6K for shaded mode, and you'll see how it looks. Let me pause the animation and then go back. Here we go. So now the flag has gravity and it also is host the position. Beautiful. Okay, so next step is I want to uh, give a wind uh, to the flag and that is, you know, uh, kind of weaving. Um, so if you select this uh, flag, this plan, and if you go to your right top menu and press this third icon, basically this one is attribute editor. If you press that, you will go to attribute editor. And under attribute editor, you will find a node that is called nCloth shape. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, if you go to nCloth shape node, uh, you'll have all those um, you know settings that uh, you can refine uh, your nCloth physics. You know, for example, conditioning how you want you know uh, the vertices to collide. Uh, you can go to a wind field and force field. Uh, we'll not go to that much details for today. So. Basically, we applied nCloth to it, and here, next step is we want to go to the preset here. If you click on preset, let me move it a little bit. So if we go to preset, and then you will see we have a, a lot, a lot, you know. And um, you can make it as a t-shirt or a silk, you know, material. And we'll go to this sub menu, and you'll see uh, there's a drop down menu. Uh, the top one is a replace, and then goes to blend 90%, 75%, 50%. So, what does this mean? Is basically, for example, if I apply a silk and I do silk and then replace, and then what happens is I will apply a silk material, and it'll have a 100% influence on this uh, plan, on this club. And if I do blend, 50, and then what happens is I will apply only 50% of this six silk material and keep 50% of its original material. Okay, the physics. So this is about the physics. So you can try silk and let's do replace. So basically this will give 100% uh, influence on the flag material and uh, you can play and see how it looks. So now you can see that it's lighter and uh, it's a smoother, softener. Okay, so let's go back to zero. So now it's the time to add some wind. Um, so still in your attribute editor, uh, see so you get uh, this uh, small triangle. If you press this one, small one towards the right, and you'll open other loads. So this is what we want to do. Uh, we want to switch to nuclear, and if we go to nuclear, uh, you will see we if you're scrolling down, and you'll see here we have a gravity and wind. Uh, so keep the gravity number as default. That's the real physics, and air density. I'll show you later. So what about wind speed? So by default it's zero. So with zero wind speed, so there's a no wind at all. Uh, so we can try ten. If you put a ten, and you can play. Okay. So now. I have applied some wind to the flag, and um, but you can tell that it comes from a different direction. It comes towards me. So why that happen? Um, if you see the wind direction, here's one, here's a zero zero. So what does this mean? So basically, the first box is x value. Here's a y value, and third box is a z value. Okay, so this indicate from which axis the wind is coming from. So right now if we put one at x, so that means the wind can come from x axis. See here is it. So if you see this ruler, that indicate you know the axis. So basically it'll come to the positive um, side on x axis. Okay that's why uh, that's one. If I put minus and let me pause the animation and uh, go back and play again. And now you can see that it goes to the opposite direction because right now I put a minus one on X as the wind direction. 
So basically, see here's the x axis. So that goes to the minus um, side, uh, the plus, uh, the negative side on x axis. Okay, so now you get the idea. So if I just put zero on x, okay, zero on x, and what I want to do is I want the wind goes from this direction, you know. So that will be z, okay. So you all put a minus one. You get the idea. Minus one, and then you know the uh, the wind will goes to the negative side of uh, z axis. If I play, see here is it. And um, if I change air density, right now it's a uh, one, and you can see how many waves my flag has. Uh, if I change the density to two, and you can see um, you all get more waves. Okay. Uh, the density of the air is uh, higher, and if I if I do three and higher, and then if I do ten, and you'll get a lot a lot of waves, and eventually you know, it looks like a flat. Okay, it all looks like flat. Um, so you can combine these two values to get a realistic uh, um, animation. Hey, here you just uh, um simulate the animation again. So this is with the air density 10 because we get so many waves and almost like a flat plan, which is not what I want. So I'll just change the air density back to back to 1 and uh, I'll um, redo the animation and uh, okay, looks better. So I would say air density 1, 2, 3 would be a good number. Okay, so basically that's pretty much of it, how you will be able to animate uh, this flag animation.